Before I start, I'd like to request all the brothers that are sitting around in the prayer hall to kindly get up and complete your rows. Jo Hazrat Jamaat Khane mein aage piche baithe hain, tamam se guzarish hai ki agli safein aakar mukammal kare. Ek aap sallallahu alaihi wasallam ka bataya hua ek amal hai, jiske upar bahut hi ajar hai. Jume ke namaz ke liye aana. اور اگلی صفوں کو مکمل کرنا اللہ تعالیٰ آپ تمام حضرات کو اس کا عجر بھی عطا فرمائے یہ جو معمولی عمل لگتا ہے لیکن اس کی اوپر عجر بہت ہی ہے I'd like to request the sisters downstairs as well to complete the rows to make the rows for جمعہ صلات انشاءاللہ we don't have long left to go and inshallah, we will be praying our Juma Salat, inshallah. So therefore, complete the rows, inshallah. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah, wa kafa wa salamun ala ibadihi al-ladheen astafa. أما بعد فقد قال الله تبارك وتعالى في كتابه العزيز بعد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم كتاب أنزلناه إليك مبارك لِيَبْدَبَّرُوا آيَاتِهِ وَلِيَتَذَكَّرَ أُولُو الْأَلْبَابِ صدق الله العظيم وصدق رسوله النبي الكريم جو حضرات جماعت خانے کے اندر کھڑے ہیں اور باتیں کر رہے ہیں جو بائے سے تشریف لائیں ہیں ان تمام سے درخواست ہے کہ خاموشی کے ساتھ جماعت خانے میں بیٹھ جائیں جماعت خانے کے آداب رکھتے ہوئے اور جو بات خود کر رہے ہیں وہ ذرا خاموش ہو جائیں انشاءاللہ سب بیٹھ جائیں گے جزاکم اللہ ایک بہت ہی خوشخبری ہے جو سنانی ہے اور اس کے ساتھ ساتھ ایک بہت صدمے کی اور افسوس کی بات ہے وہ بھی سنانی ہے جو خوشخبری ہے انتہائی مسررت کی بات ہے وہ یہ ہے کہ اس رمضان المبارک کے مہینے کے اندر اللہ رب العزت نے ہمیں یہ جمعہ عطا فرمایا ہے اور صرف جمعہ عطا نہیں فرمایا بلکہ ہمیں وضو کرنے کی بھی توفیق عطا فرمائی اور ہمیں اپنے گھر کے اندر آنے کی بھی توفیق عطا فرمائی اور انشاءاللہ جمعی کی نماز ادا کرنے کی بھی توفیق اور امید ہے انشاءاللہ اللہ رب العزت سے لیکن جو افسوس اور صدمے کی بات ہے وہ یہ ہے کہ یہ جمعہ جو ہے یہ اس ماہ مبارک کا اخیری جمعہ ہے اور یہ ایک محقق بات ہے کہ آئندہ جمعہ تک رمضان المبارک کا مہینہ یہ ختم ہو جائے گا آئندہ سال کس کو یہ مہینہ نصیب ہوتا ہے کس کو نہیں آج جمعہ کے بعد بھی دو جنازے ہیں جو ہمارے ساتھ تھے پچھلے جمعہ کو لیکن اس جمعہ کو وہ ہمارے ساتھ نہیں ہے اس لیے ایک ڈر اور خوف کی بات بھی ہے سور نصر جب نزول ہوئی اِذَا جَاءَ نَصْرُ اللَّهِ وَالْفَتْحُ وَرَأَيْتَ النَّاسَ يَدْخُلُونَ فِي دِينِ اللَّهِ اَفْوَاجَ تو بظاہر اس کے اندر خوشخبریاں تھی بہت ہی خوشخبریاں تھی اور یہ ایک مسلمانوں کے لیے ایک اچھی خبر تھی لیکن جب وہ نازل ہوئی تو ایک صحابی صدمے کے ساتھ رونے لگے اور پھر آپ صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم نے جب دریافت فرمایا ان سے تو انہوں نے اس بات کی طرف اشارہ کیا کہ یہ آپ کے جانے کا وقت آ گیا ہے یہ خوشخبری ہے امت کے لیے لیکن آپ کا کام تمام ہو گیا ہے جس کی وجہ سے 
افسور اور صدمہ بھی ہو رہا ہے تو وہی حالت وہی منظر رمضان المبارک کا مہینہ ہے یہ جمعۃ المبارک ہے اور جمعۃ الوداع بھی ہے لوگ دور دراز سے ویسے بھی تشریف لاتے ہیں اور آج مزید یعنی کہ جنازے کے لیے بھی لوگ تشریف لائے ہیں اور ایسے مجموع کے اندر ہمیں مسجد کے آداب کی رعایت بھی رکھنی ہے اور اللہ سے ڈرنا بھی ہے کہ یہ آخری جمعہ ہے اس ماہ مبارک کا لیکن دعا اور تمنا ہونی چاہیے کہ اللہ تعالیٰ مستقبل کے اندر بھی ہمیں یہ ماہ مبارک نصیب فرمائیں اور ان ماہ مبارک کے اندر نیکیاں کرنا بھی توفیق عطا فرمائیں مائی ڈیئر رسپیکٹیو بردرس سسٹرز ایلڈرز اینڈ لو ینگ ونس از وی نو اٹ از دا لاسٹ فرائیڈے اینڈ لاسٹ جمعہ آف رمضان ٹوینٹی ٹوینٹی فور اٹ از انڈیڈ سم تھنگ ٹو بی ہیپی اباؤٹ دیٹ وی ہیو بین بلیسڈ ود دا اپرچونیٹی تھرو دا مرسی آف اللہ سبحانہ و تعالیٰ ٹو کم فار جمعہ صلاح اینڈ وی آر سٹنگ ان دا ہاؤس آف اللہ سبحانہ و تعالیٰ This would not have been possible without the blessings and mercy and the raham of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So therefore we should be thankful. We should be mindful about the etiquettes of the masjid. When we come, we park our cars in the appropriate areas. When we come inside the masjid, we sit down very silently and listening to the wa'az nasiyat, to the, to the Qur'an hadith, and then when the time comes for khutbah, whether we understand the Arabic language or not, but we listen very attentively as part of Salah. We should be also fearful of the fact that this is the last Juma of this month. Next year, who's going to be here or not? We see that there will be two janazas taking place after Juma Salat as well. They were with us last Juma, but they are not with us here today. So we should really be doing a check and balance. And there are a few things that I just want to mention as reminders, as a checklist, that in these last few days and hours of the month of Ramadan, what is it that we should be looking at? We should be looking at our Quran. This month has a very strong connection, an affiliation with the month of Ramadan. When we see the Hufas sitting down reading Quran to each other, this is the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam that he would sit with Jibreel alayhi salam and every year would listen and recite the Quran. And in the final year, Jibreel alayhi salatu wasalam done it twice. And then the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam departed. So what was our intention at the beginning of the month of Ramadan? What did we want to do? We wanted to read one Quran. Are we on track with it? Or I didn't know how to learn Quran, but I wanted to appoint an ustad or somebody that I could correct my last 10 surahs. Or I knew last 10 surahs, I wanted to learn and memorize 20 surahs. We check at our Quran because it is just like we're going to work and we have a mobile phone charger. And we want to fully charge our mobile phone before we leave for work. Because we won't find a charger at work or where we're traveling. So we want to maximize the benefit of our battery on our mobile phone. So we try to fully charge it. So today is the day that we look at our spiritual batteries and check that have we charged them completely or not? Or have I totally wasted my whole month that I didn't even find a charger? I had so many opportunities, but these are the last few days of this blessed month. And if we haven't, we need to wake up today, right now, and plug in our batteries and make sure that we can fully charge our batteries because they need to last us for the rest of the whole year, for the rest of the 11 months that we need our batteries charged. We look at Laylatul Qadr, these precious nights that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed us with. And need to ponder over that why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not fix a one night. That okay, Laylatul Qadr is on the 21st night or it's on the 23rd night. There is a lot of hikmat and wisdom inside that. But first of all, as we learn from hadith, two people were fighting and quarreling 
And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala concealed the exact night. From that we can also tell that how, what a despise and what a horrible act it is to fight and argue amongst each other. That such a blessed news that was going to be shared, but it was taken back by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So if there's any fighting, arguing, we should make up with each other. And small, small things, you know, we stop talking to each other, we shouldn't be doing that. But if that has happened, we should make up with each other because this is how despised this action of fighting and quarreling is. The other benefit of this is that we can pray on every single night. If it had been the 21st night, a person might have been working on that one night and said, oh, I can't take any time off. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed us with other opportunities in these last few nights of the month of Ramadan. We also learn from this that sometimes Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has put us in a situation. A person might think that I am going through a very difficult time. But there is some hikmah in it from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he has put us in this challenging situation which might seem challenging but that there is great good and hikmah in it. One scholar says that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has concealed many things because of many reasons. Allah has concealed this one night, exact night, so we carry on worshipping every single night of the month of Ramadan and especially the last 10 nights. Similarly, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has concealed the time of acceptance of dua on a Friday. And many times have been mentioned before khutbah, after adhan, during between two khutbahs, after salah, before maghrib, so that an individual stays engaged in ibadah and dua throughout this blessed day of Jummah. Similarly, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has concealed ismul a'zam amongst all the rest asma. So when we look at Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for this ismul a'zam, we look at in every single name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Al Khalik, Al Malik, Al Quddus, Al Salam, Al Mu'min, Al Muhaymin. Similarly, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has concealed his pleasure in the acts of obedience. So, whether it's this act or that act, it is for us to look in each and every single act and try to do as much good as we can so that we look for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's pleasure. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has also concealed our lifespan. If we knew that we have come in this world for 20 years, then a person would think, let me relax and chill for 19 years and the last few days before I'm going to pass away, then I will become pious. But none of us know, every one of us know our date of birth, but our date of departure, none of us know that. And also the day of judgment, when is the day of judgment going to come? If we knew, we were told that the end of 2024, the day of judgment will come, then the last day is the day that we would all do collective ibadah and gather in the masjid. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has concealed that as well. So in this concealing, there is a lot of hikmat from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we need to make the most of the last 10 days and the last few days that we've got of this month of Ramadan. Also we see itikaf is a blessed action and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept each and every single person's intention and those that are in itikaf, the sunnah itikaf of the last 10 days. But at the same time, we have the ability to make a nafil itikaf as well. Whenever we come into the masjid, we make intention of itikaf, nawait sunnah al-itikaf. And we make itikaf and when we are in the masjid, we will be rewarded for all the a'mal that we normally would have been doing. We would have been going around shopping for some elderly, feeding some homeless people and doing great acts. But it does not mean a person is inside the masjid, then he gets left out and deprived of the great good of those actions that he normally would have been doing. But no, Allah the most merciful blesses him or her with that ajar as well. And females can make itikaf at home as well by designating an area in the home where after doing all the rest things, they can sit and do ibadah. And this act of itikaf, a person, whether they are eating, they are sleeping, they are learning, whatever they are doing, 
they get ajr and thawab of ibadah. Such a beautiful act of worship that the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam would do in this month of Ramadan, looking out for the month, for the nights of Qadr. And then there is du'a. Du'a is something that is connected with this month as well, where Allah subhanahu wa taala accepts the du'as. And then there was a du'a which the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam taught Aisha radiyallahu anha, and that is a du'a for the last ten nights as well. Allahumma ajirni min al nar. From we ask for the freedom from fire of Jahannam as well. And there are many occasions throughout the day where Allah subhanahu wa taala accepts the du'as at the time of sari, time of tahajjud, at iftar, before salah, after salah, after adhan, and tahajjud time, drinking zamzam, many occasions where we should be asking du'a. And at the same time, inshallah, tomorrow, there will be Qur'an khatam here in the masjid as well. And these are occasions where du'as are accepted. In individual du'as as well as collective du'as, at the time when Qur'an is completed as well, so du'a will take place tomorrow inshallah after tarawih salad after the quran is completed so everybody is requested inshallah to come and participate in that as well and then there is zakatul fitr which we also know as sadaqatul fitr we also know at know it as fitrana and this is something which is compulsory upon each and every person who has sufficient food for the day for the day, it is unlike zakat where it has a longer criteria. So fitrana is something that needs to be paid on each and every single person, sane, insane, male, female, every dependent that we have, we need to pay it on their behalf, even children. And it is calculated as five pounds. And this is something that will cleanse our soul. And it is a means of sustenance for the poor. And on the day of Eid, when we are rejoicing and we are merrymaking and we are happy, the Prophet wasallam instructed us to ensure that the poor and needy are happy as well. So this needs to be given. There are boxes downstairs and allocated around the masjid that you can put the money in there. And that money is given or wherever you normally pay, but make sure you pay now. Now is the time to give it so that it reaches the poor and needy people. And also the final thing is fidya. Fidya is something separate. And fidya is for those people who were not able to keep their fast due to a terminal or long-term illness. It is not only something temporary that, oh, I've got a cough and cold, I won't keep a fast today, I will pay fidya instead. No, it is only for those people who have got a long-term illness, there's no hope of recovery from it or elderly, or weak, or uh, the, uh, the ill people. And it is calculated as the same amount that is calculated for fitrana. So fitrana this year is five pounds. So it would be five pounds per soul. So somebody who hasn't been able to keep the, month of Ram the fast of the Ram month of Ramadan due to a valid reason, then it will be 150 pounds that they pay. And that is a separate thing that needs to be paid. And that also goes to the poor and needy as well. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give me and all of us the tawfiq and ability to understand the ahkamat of Islam and to act upon it as well. I would like to request everybody to stand up in your places, inshallah. Can all the brothers in the Jamaat Khana, can you all stand up? Jazakumullah. And complete the rows. Move forward. Complete the rows. The brothers that are sitting on the chairs, if there are any gaps on the chairs, then please complete those places as well. Once you have completed your rows, then please sit down. There are many brothers that are waiting outside and at the back as well. Last week, we had many people praying the salah in the car park as well. We should not leave any empty space in the masjid at all. Jazakumullah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you with khair and afiyah of deen and dunya. As soon as you found place, then please sit down, inshallah. Jazakumullah. الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر 
أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله حي على السلام حي على السلام حي على الفلاح
Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Indeed, it is a great blessing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that He has blessed us with this last Jum'ah of Ramadan 2024. We make dua that may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept all our a'mal and enable us to be able to receive many more months of Ramadan in our lifetime and accept all our good deeds as well, insha'Allah. Straight after Jum'ah Salat, there will be two janazas. So just the first row will be requested to move back half a row and straighten the rows for the janazas to come. And the first row is reminded not to start the sunnats until janazah is prayed and leaves. Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'oon. Salat janazah will be read for Brother Sabir Hussain, father of Tariq Basharat Waid Hussain of Jakswari. Salat to Janaza will also be read at the same time for Sister Rabia Bai Katri, the wife of late Hussein Ahmed Katri, the mother of Mahbub, Asif and Salim. We make dua that may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala raise the rank of Brother Sabir Hussein and Rabia Bai Katri. We also make dua that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grants them both a place in Jannatul Firdaus. We also ask that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant sabr and patience to each and every one of their family members. If either of the deceased had any shortcomings, we ask for those of you that knew them, you forgive them for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And if there are any outstanding matters, financial or otherwise, regarding either deceased, please see their respective family members. The burial for Sabir Hussein takes place this afternoon at 6 p.m. at Sutton New Hall Cemetery. And the burial for Rabia by Qatari will take place today at 3 p.m., also at Sutton New Hall Cemetery. The family of Sabir Hussain will be sitting in Jakeman Road Masjid in Bolsal Heath from 4.30 this afternoon for Fatiha and Iftar. We also need to remember that, inshallah, when we come for Eid Salats, Eid will be announced on Masjid's social media and as per normal program, inshallah, there will be five Eid Salat. We just need to remember that there will be many brothers and sisters coming from out of town. If family members are coming with them, then we need to really be mindful about parking. That not parking in front of people's driveways or gangways, and it is going to be a weekday. So therefore, it is our duty that anybody, any family members or friends are coming out of town with us, that first of all, if you can car share, then alhamdulillah, if you cannot, then please remind each other that they be mindful of where and how they park their cars. Also a remembrance about Zakatul Fitr. If we have not paid, then make sure we pay it now uh, before Eid, inshallah, as well. Jazakumullah. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu, brothers and sisters downstairs as well. Uh, alhamdulillah, we are near the completion of Ramadan, and I just want to make uh, one important uh, request from you, inshallah, on this very auspicious day, inshallah, in Ramadan. Um, we, we've embarked on the project to complete the masjid, uh, inshallah. We've given a contract uh, subject to funding, of course, but to complete by the end of this year, inshallah, and that requires us to raise something like 1.55 million pounds is less than that and you saw from the uh, the figures on the meters so far that we set a target of 200,000 inshallah for this Ramadan we are kind of halfway inshallah so we still got five days to go and I want you inshallah to help us to achieve that inshallah target here in the last days of Ramadan the extension project as you know creates a capacity of 1,500 1,500 overflow in this masjid so today there'll be 4,000 people here. What I'm asking all the brothers and sisters to do is that if all of you, inshallah, think about the, making a contribution, there are two ways of making a contribution. You can make a contribution less than that, obviously, but one square meter of tiling in the new place costs 70 pounds. Commit, inshallah, try to commit to 70 pounds, one square meter of tiling in your name in the new complex. The new complex will be here, just like this building is here. This was built 55 years ago. It is still here, but the people who built it are not here. 
And likewise, inshallah, I want all the brothers, inshallah, and sisters to make a contribution toward the completion of this important project for Birmingham. What is happening in the project itself? Well, we've got, uh, we're building a, a purpose-built facility for educating children at the top. We are establishing also an education institute here. We've got a dedicated women's area as well. And there's extra uh, floor space for taziat and ziyat, uh, for taziat and for matams and so on. And no wuzu facility. So there are lots of things. I can't mention all of them here. But it's a very important opportunity to leave a legacy, really, for future generations, inshallah, El Aziz. We are also asking 300 families if they can give 300 pounds per family. That's another way of contributing as well. I request, brothers, inshallah, that you will participate in that. Look, the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the very beautiful hadith of Rasul, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He said, on Yom al-Qiyamah, Allah will ask. Allah will ask the angels, where are my neighbors? He will ask, where are my neighbors? The angels will say... Who deserves to be your neighbor, O oh Allah? It's a surprising thing. Who can be? And Allah will say to them that they are the Umar al-Masajid. Umar al-Masajid means those people who maintain, who make the masjid come alive, who build the masjid, who make the masjid flourish in every single sense of the word. They are the Umar al-Masajid. They are the neighbors of Allah. So this is the status, inshallah, that we should be seeking, inshallah. So I ask you, inshallah, just like I did last week, inshallah, to make a generous contribution today in towards the target of 200,000. We're standing halfway there, inshallah. I'm sure we can make very good progress, inshallah, towards that direction. Jazakumullah khairan. Barakallah fi. Can I ask the brothers, inshallah, to uh, do the collection now, the physical collection, as it were. You also have an opportunity, inshallah, to donate online. You can go to the uh, Masjid website. Uh, not everybody will be able to use the machines here. There are only a few machines here. Some people can buy machines. When you go home, inshallah, you can contribute via the website. We got boxes there as well and on the way out, downstairs as well. Inshallah, you, make, you can make a physical contribution into the boxes as well towards the extension project of the masjid, inshallah. It will be an asset for the Muslim community for the coming century. None of us will be here. But the masjid, inshallah, Al Aziz will be here. It will be serving the community. And you will be re re reaping the rewards, inshallah, of your generous and kind donations, inshallah. Donate whatever you can. Whether it is small, big, it doesn't matter. One pound donated during the month of Ramadan is equal to 70. Okay? And 70 is 700. This is the deal. This is the offer that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is making. And of course, it's the odd nights. Try to give every single day as well, inshallah. So we catch the odd night as well when one month is worth a thousand. So it's a different kind of deal. One is equal to a thousand, inshallah. With these words, inshallah, jazakumullah khairan, barakallah fi. May Allah bless all of you, inshallah, and accept your ibadat, your generosity, your qiratul Quran, your siyam, and your sacrifices, and your generosity that you've extended, inshallah, to your own families, to other people as well. Indeed, people all over in the world. The Muslim community in UK is one of the most generous communities, yeah, by statistics produced by the Charity Commission as well. We gave way above our own weight, if you know what I mean, yeah. So this is the blessing of Islam. This is the honor of Islam. And uh, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless all of you and all of your families as well. Jazakumullah khairan. Barakallah fi. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah. أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله هيا على الشلال 
الحمد لله الذي وفقنا للقيام والصيام ونساله سبحانه ان ندخلنا الجنه من باب الريان واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له الواحد القهار العزيز الغفار يخلق ما يشاء ويختار فله الحمد اولا واخرا وله الشكر باطنا وظاهرا واشهد ان سيدنا محمد عبد الله ورسوله اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على سيدنا محمد وعلى اله واصحابه والتابعين ومن تبعهم باحسان الى يوم الدين اما بعد فوصيكم عباد الله ونفسي بتقوى الله جل وعلا امتثالا لقوله تعالى يا ايها الذين امنوا كتب عليكم الصيام كما كتب على الذين من قبلكم لعلكم تتقون ايها الصائمون بالامس كنا نستقبل شهر رمضان واليوم قارب ان يمضي فسبحان من صرف الشهور والاعوام وفرض الشرائع والاحكام والفائز من استثمر وقته في طاعه السميع العليم قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم كل الناس يغدو فباعي نفسه فمؤتقها او موبقها نعم لقد مضى رمضان بايامه المعدودات مسجلا سبق العاملين بما قدموا من حسنات يقول الله سبحانه وما تقدموا لانفسكم من خير تجدوه عند الله هو خيرا واعظم اجرا فابشروا ايها الصائمون بشفاعه لا ترد وعطاء لا يحد فقد اذمعتم نهاركم وزينتم اصواتكم بالقران فغدا ياتيكم الصوم والقران يشفعان لكم يوم القيامه فيرتضيهما الله تعالى ويرضيكم ويقبل شفاعتهما فيكم قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم الصيام والقران يشفعان للعبد يوم القيامه يقول الصيام اي ربي منعته الطعام والشهوات بالنهار فشفعني فيه ويقول القران منعته النوم بالليل فشفعني فيه قال فيشفعان ايها الصائمون لقد شرع الله تعالى لنا ما يتم به صومنا في رمضان وما يرفع عنا به الزلل والنقصان فاوجب علينا زكاه الفطر لحكم عظيم واحداث نبيله فان ابن عباس رضي الله عنهما قال فرض رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم زكاه الفطر طهره للصائم من اللغو والرفث وتعمه للمساكين وكان صلى الله عليه وسلم يخطب قبل يوم الفطر ويأمر باخراجها قال عبد الله بن ثعلبة بن صغير الغضري خطب رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم الناس قبل الفطر بيومين فقال ادوا ساعا من بر او قمح بين اثنين او ساعا من تمر او ساعا من شعير على كل حر وعبد وصغير وكبير فزكاة الفطر واجبة على كل مسلم ان نفسه وامن تلزمه نفقته ممن يعولهم من افراد الاسره من غالب قوت البلد وتؤتى للفقراء المسلمين وقد اجاز بعض الفقهاء دفع قيمتها لكونها انفع للفقير فعلى المسلم اداء زكاه فطره واتمام صومه وان يقيم حيث اقامه الله عز وجل من الخير ويكون حيث اراد له من البر ويحسن به الا يفتر عن العباده فالله سبحانه امر رسوله الكريم صلى الله عليه وسلم فقال فاذا فرغت فانسب قال اهل العلم 
المعني إذا أتممت عملا من محام الأعمال فأقبل على عمل آخر بحيث تعمر أوقاتك كلها بالأعمال العظيمة إباد الله لقد شرع لنا الرحيم الغفور العيد للفرح والسرور ليعنس فيه المسلم بما أحله الله تعالى بعد آدائه العبادات وقد صن لنا رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم بعض الأعمال التي ينبغي مراءاتها في العيد ومنها الغسل قبيل الخروج لصلاة العيد فأن نافع أن عبد الله بن عمر كان يغتسل يوم الفطر قبل أن يغدو إلى المصلى ويستحب للرجال التطيب قبل الخروج للمصلى ولبس أحسن الثياب ومن آداب العيد المستحبة أن يفطر على تمرة قبل الخروج لصلاة العيد الفطر فأنا عنس رضي الله عن قال كان رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم لا يغدو يوم الفطر حتى يأكل تمرات ويأكلهن بطرا كما يستحب للمسلم المشي للمصلى إن أمكنه ذلك فأنا علي بن أبي طالب رضي الله عن قال من السنة أن تخرج إلى الإيد ماشيا وأن يغير الطريق الذي ذهب منه فيرجع من غيره فأن جابر رضي الله تعالى عن قال كان النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم إذا كان يوم عيد خالف الطريق أي صلى الله أي كان صلى الله عليه وسلم إذا خرج إلى العيد رجع من غير الطريق الذي ذهب فيه ومن آداب العيد المشروع الخروج لصلاة العيد الكبير والصغير والرجال والنساء فأن أم أتية رضي الله عنها قالت أمرنا أن نخرج الأواتق وذوات الخدور فاصطحبوا أهل بيتكم معكم ليشحدوا صلاة العيد مع المصلين وينالوا العجر العظيم من رب العالمين فاللهم بارك لنا فيما بقي من رمضان وبلغنا العيد بسلام ووفقنا جميعا لطاعتك وطاعة نبينا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم نفعني الله وإياكم بالقرآن العظيم وبسنة نبي الكريم صلى الله عليه وسلم أقول قولي هذا وأستغفر الله لي ولكم فاستغفروه إنه هو الغفور الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن سيدنا محمد عبده ورسوله اللهم سل وسل وبارك على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله الطيبين الطاهرين وعلى أصحابه أجمعين والتابعين لهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين أما بعد فاتقوا الله عباد الله حق التقوى وراقبوه في السر والنجوى وعلموا أنه من السنة أن يجهر المصلي في طريقه في طريقه بالتكبير والتحليل والتحميد جهرا يسمع نفسه ومن يليه وفوق ذلك حتى يأتي الإمام فيكبر ويكبر الناس بتكبيره ومما يستحب في العيد أن تلقي التحية والتحنية على من تعرف وعلى من لا تعرف فأن جبير بن نفير قال كان أصحاب رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم إذا التقوا يوم العيد يقول بعضهم لبعض تقبل الله منا ومنكم والتهنية تكون بآية عبارة من إبارات التهاني المعروفة هذا وصلوا وسلموا على من أمرتم بالصلاة والسلام عليه قال تعالى إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما وقال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم من صلى علي صلاة صلى الله عليه بها عشرا اللهم سل وسلم وبارك على سيدنا ونبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين ورضى اللهم عن الخلفاء الراشدين أبي بكر وعمر وأثمان وعلي وأن سائر السهابة الأكرمين وأهل التابعين ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين اللهم تقبل منا الصيام والقيام وصالح الأعمال اللهم إنا نسلك الجنة وما قرب إليها من قول أو أمل ونعوذ بك من النار وما قرب إليها من قول أو أمل <تصفيق> اللهم إنا نسلك الجنة لنا ولوالدينا ولمن له حق علينا وللمسلمين أجمعين اللهم لا تدع لنا ذنبا إلا غفرته ولا حما إلا فرشته ولا دينا إلا قضيته 
ولا مريضا إلا شافيته ولا ميتا إلا رحمته ولا هاجة إلا قضيتها ويسرتها يا رب العالمين اللهم ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وكنا عذاب النار اللهم اغفر للمسلمين والمسلمات الأحياء منهم والأموات اللهم أصلح أحوال المسلمين في فلسطين اللهم أصلح أحوال المسلمين في فلسطين اللهم انشر الاستقرار والسلام في بلدان المسلمين والآلم أجمعين ودخل اللهم في عفوك وغفرانك ورحمتك آباءنا وأمهاتنا وجميع أرحامنا ومن له حق علينا إباد الله أذكر الله العظيم يذكركم واشكروه على نعمه يزدكم وأقم الصلاة الله أكبر الله أكبر أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله هيا على الصلاة هيا على الفلاح قد قامت الصلاة قد قامت الصلاة الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله Please ensure that the heels on the line, there's no gaps in between. Please avoid standing by any fire exits or any gangways. Please turn off your mobile phones or put them on silent. Inshallah, straight after Juma Salat, there will be two janazas. Jazakumullah. <coughs> الله أكبر الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله ولتنظر نفس ما قدمت لغد واتقوا الله إن الله خبير بما تعملون ولا تكونوا كالذين نسوا الله فأنساهم أنفسهم أولئك هم الفاسقون لا يستوي أصحاب النار وأصحاب الجنة أصحاب الجنة هم الفائزون لو أنزلنا هذا القرآن على جبل لرأيته خاشعا متصدعا من خشية الله وتلك الأثمثال نضربها للناس لعلهم يتفكرون الله أكبر
سمع الله لمن حمده الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر <تصفيق> الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين هو الله الذي لا إله إلا هو عالم الغيب والشهادة هو الرحمن الرحيم هو الله الذي لا إله إلا هو الملك القدوس السلام المؤمن المهيمن العزيز الجبار المتكبر سبحان الله عم ما يشركون هو الله الخالق البارئ المسور له الأسماء الحسنى يسبح له ما في السماوات والأرض وهو العزيز الحكيم الله أكبر سمع الله لمن حمده الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر السلام عليكم ورحمة الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم There are many brothers and sisters who have requested for dua We make dua for all those that are ill and sick Sister Hawa makes requested for dua and many other sisters and likewise many brothers who are ill and sick may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless them all with shifai kamila ajila mustamira those that have passed away may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive them shower his mercy upon them elevate their status in the hereafter 
We also remember those innocent civilians that have been killed in the genocide in Palestine. All those innocent females, children, and civilians, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless them with Jannatul Firdaus. All those that are injured, ill, and sick, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alleviate their illnesses and shower His mercy upon them. Those that are starving, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala feed them through His mercy and keep them in His protection, insha'Allah. Please make your rose for Salatul Janazah, insha'Allah.